this is one thing about me. I don't do excuses, man. I'm tired of this world where we all are giving excuses as to you can't find your passion. You know, like it will come to you. Nah, man, you gotta be. You have to be intentional. This is the Mutual Report Podcast, the number one podcast in the world for those looking to build their vision and turn their dreams into reality. And it's Tuesday, and I am. I'm tired. I'm gonna be honest, bro. I'm tired. I don't know why. It's only the second day of the week, but it feels like I'm four, five days in already. But I am ex. Ow! I just hit my hand on something in the studio (laughs) i am excited and pumped because i just pumped my fist into the wall about this episode because there's such good advice in this episode and and my guest today is tim salau a great guy awesome professional he's worked at google microsoft facebook awesome resume and he's just a great dude his vibe is so contagious straight positivity and he just makes you smile and and laugh awesome guy and and today we are talking about careers yeah yeah careers now work is necessary we all know that we all need it for survival here um, if you're an adult and you have to do it your whole life so why not do something that you love why do something that you hate so we're going to be breaking down how to find the right career for you i might be saying uh cleave you know i'm an entrepreneur i'm a freelancer how does this apply to me now i know a lot of you guys listen to this podcast and it's not only for people who want to get into the mainstream workforce the advice in this episode is definitely applicable to the self-employed i even asked some entrepreneurial minded questions in this interview so even if you're an entrepreneur you do not want to skip over this episode especially if you're in the beginning stages of your journey the applies the advice applies uh to you greatly in this one so without further ado let's let's get into this episode with tim salau let's go loading It's a case study for success. Be teachable. What better way to learn than to just ask? The learning process becomes a journey. Turning dreams into reality. Part of execution is is totally believing whatever you're doing is gonna work. What are your passions and what are your gifts? And that's where it really starts. Chances are for taking. Take a chance on yourself. Any and everyone is capable of being a leader. You're not going to have all the answers immediately. Wow. Mentors to, to expose you to things that you otherwise wouldn't know. It was all I thought about and dreamed like I, I would literally get up in the morning, practice, because I knew the opportunity time would come. Just do it. community builder i lead a 6,000 member community called mentors and mentees which is a community platform for professionals and students who are looking to achieve life and career fulfillment i uh, formerly worked at microsoft <laughs> i worked with google i've worked with facebook all within the last three years actually in a variety of roles Whoa. community engagement to ux research intern to product management and i love 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 tech and i'm actually going to be working with we work in a awesome. few weeks, actually, April 1st, as a product marketing manager, and I'm going to be working with them to unleash the future of work and speak more to enterprises and workers and HR reps on how do they really evangelize and create a workplace culture that embraces community purpose and allows people to come to work and do their best work. So that's going to be the new role I transition to in a few weeks. And I am super passionate about career mentorship, community building, and one of my supplemental gigs, because I don't like calling it a side gig, one of my supplemental Mm -hmm. gigs is I'm also a career coach for young professionals and mid-career professionals and students who are looking to, you know, take control of their careers. And I do public speaking as well. So I'm a man of many hats, but my divine purpose in life, as I call it, is to strengthen the bonds that people share through compassion and empathic action and ensure people are, you know, on the roadmap to their success. 
Right. And we're not just going to glide over the fact that you just threw out literally the three biggest tech companies <laughs> like in the world. You just slid over that real smooth. Yeah, Google, Facebook, Microsoft. <laughs> So clearly, the audience, you know that he knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing because yeah. the average person is just not securing the three biggest tech companies in the world in three years. <laughs> so so you're getting it here first, guys. You want to listen hard. Okay. Yeah. Um, awesome. So in my, in my research and, and, and kind of just brainstorming of this topic, I was kind of able to break down uh, the types of people uh, who are looking kind of for answers and guidance into three major groups. Mm. Um, and those are... Uh, people who are kind of just going through the motions, um, whether that's with school, whether that's with work, um, and they actually have no idea what their passion is. They don't know what their purpose in life is, and they don't know what they want their career path to be. They're kind of just in this rut. They don't really know, um, and, and, and they're just kind of getting by and living for the weekend. Uh, the yeah. second part is the second type is, uh, those who know what they love to do. They probably do it on the weekends. They probably talk about it all the time to their friends, but they don't really know what direction to go in as far as like, can I really do this for a living? Can I really make a career out of this? I like to do it, but you know, is it feasible? Third type is people who already have jobs, mm. who already have careers that they might be established in, but they're trying to make a change, whether it's because They've just gotten bored with what they're doing. Uh, they never liked it in the first place, but, you know, it was a means to an end. Or maybe they're possibly even retiring and now it's a new phase of life for them and they want to start something new. Mm. Um, so those are kind of like the three areas I kind of want to get a little bit of guidance for because I know those are kind of be an umbrella over the people who fall in, be- fall in between. So uh, <laughs> that was kind of a lot, but would you be yeah. able to, like, segment your answers tying into those three parts and we could go through them one by one? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Awesome. Man, you know, I think it's important, especially when you're early in your career and you may not have a definitive answer as to what it is you're supposed to do, it's important to experiment. Now, experimentation can take many forms. It can be you taking a leap of faith and doing something that you're completely uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. For example, when I was an undergrad, I was not that much of a leader in a sense of I wasn't the young man that was a part of all types of all, you know, all of the different types of leadership organizations that are presented to you when you're an undergrad, whether it be, you know, the Black Student Association or joining, you know, a student government. I didn't do all of that. I was very focused on doing my undergrad, getting in and getting out. Yes. Now, (laughs) during my senior year of school, I did go and become a part of a fraternity, which taught me a lot about leadership and how to understand your purpose. And while I was an undergrad, for the most part, I think I was really always experimenting, learning, absorbing, introspecting as to what am I going to do beyond undergrad, right? Mm -hmm. And towards my senior year, after I had an amazing internship at a national laboratory where I had the opportunity to do more work around user experience design and product design and work in tech, I realized that, look, after I graduate, I don't think I'm really ready to go into the workforce because I don't really have that much clarity on what I need to do. Even though I've experimented with a lot of different things while I was in undergrad, I learned about graphic design. I learned about technical communications. I learned about how human computer interaction impacts technology and product. I, I learned a lot, but I still didn't feel as if I was ready. So I took a leap of faith and made myself even more uncomfortable by going to grad school, <laughs> <laughs> literally, and you know, incurring more student loans. That was a really uncomfortable thing for me because it's saying, look, I don't think a bachelor's was enough. It didn't really do the job for me. So I took that leap of faith and went on to another level because I felt as if it would give me more time to learn and better myself, build a better network and have more clarity on what I wanted to do. But all of the experimentation I did during undergrad gave me a, a sense of clarity as to if I'm going to go to grad school at the University of Texas at Austin at the School of Information in Austin, Texas. Well, that's you know what I'm going to study there is going to be more focused around what I'm interested in, which is product design, product management, UX and tech. So experimentation is crucial, man. When you're an undergrad, you're early in your career, and you don't exactly know what your purpose is, you need to absorb and take those leaps of faith and figure out what is it that you're good at and what is it that ties back into your strengths, whether it be of communication, interpersonal communication, or collaboration, or organizing people, mobilizing people, right? What are those things that really allow you to stand out? Now, for the people who are in their zone of greatness, they know what they need to do, and they are passionate about what they love, but they don't necessarily know what to do next in order to, I guess, act upon their passions, then I think it's a matter of taking it day by day, whether putting your, yourself in positions of, you know, evangelizing, sharing your passions, right? So if you're really passionate about knitting, mm-hmm. you know, find all of the opportunities to participate in the communities that embrace your passion and will accept you for your gifts, right? Create time in your week, in your day to pursue that passion of yours, whether it be web design, right? Or public speaking, yeah. you got to put in the time, you know, to be in your prime, right? Oh, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's a mindset, man. It's a mindset in my opinion. Okay. Okay. And, and, uh, since you kind of went to the second one already, we might as well just go on to the third. Uh, what was that one? People who are kind of established already, but kind of want to make a change. But they, you know, that fear is there. 
whether uh, is this the right move? Should I just stay where I'm comfortable or or yeah, you know, yeah, trying to transition, man. You know, we're living in interesting times, man. Very dynamic times. Now, I do believe that you can transition into greatness at any point in your career. Sincerely, you don't have to settle for the status quo that everyone tells you that this is what you were supposed to be doing up until the age of 40. You can literally shift and adapt as you choose, but you have to be intentional. So for the people who are mid-career right now and they are living lives that they are not passionate about, they are working in jobs that don't really speak to them, I think that it's often a mental gridlock that leaves these people in their state. Mm. They don't think they can do it. I'm too old. Yeah. I, I ain't hip enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I worked this job for 20 years. It's too comfortable. I got my, I got, I got that compensation, right? Right. And that's sad. That's really, really sad because at the end of the day, if you really want to pursue purpose, right, over a paycheck or over what's given and 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 ask for you to settle for, then you have to take those risks. And I don't think at any point in our lives we need to stop taking risks. You always have to be a risk taker. And sometimes life is going to force you to, to take a risk yeah. and adapt. So it's either you're in control of how you adapt. You, you know, you're working in cooperation with destiny, your destiny, your purpose in life, or at a point you're just going to be forced to because you never know what's coming your way. So I think a, my biggest tactical solution for those people is to start putting themselves around people, communities that are aligned to their passion. Because at that point in your life, if you're mid-career and you want to shift your, your, your career, you want to shift your life. The reason why you want to shift is because you haven't been you haven't been putting yourself around the people, the, the spaces, the communities that can really support you or the things that can allow you to thrive. So the quicker you throw yourself into being a part of that, you know, new organization around that new career that you want to pursue, the quicker that you are about finding friends that actually want you to be great. Mm -hmm. Right. The quicker you are about adopting new technologies, new social medias. Right. Anything that would allow you to change your perspective on life, the quicker you open yourself up okay. to those opportunities, the better. Right. And you mentioned pretty much in every level of those things to put yourself in communities and spaces that help, you know, nurture that that passion that you have, you know. Yeah. So my my next thing, question, I mean, I, I think I know most of the answers for this, but some people may not. And I just found it through osmosis and through research and time of just trying to find it myself. Yeah. But where do they go to? Where do you, where do you find these communities? Where can these things happen? You know, you know, it all depends on where you are in your life. You can be a college student and, you know, when you're in college, you are around a huge robust community, your yeah. university campus, right? There's so many subcultures, so many sub communities at, at the college level that you can join and be a part of if your passion is in something. Now, once you graduate college and you're early in your career and you're working maybe either in corporate or you're doing your own thing as a freelancer, which I always encourage, especially when you're early in your career, it's a matter of really taking advantage of the networks at your place of work or as a freelancer or someone that may be a gig worker, taking advantage of creating time on the weekends to go to events around things that you're passionate about. Right. Mm -hmm. Go to go to conferences. Right. Spend yeah. your money on your knowledge to extend your learnings and be around the people that you can connect with and may lead you to your next big opportunity. Right. right. So, you know, so early in career, then mid career, you know, at that time, you're, at that point, you either work in corporate America, or you're doing your own big thing. Right. And, you know, how you how you are how you go about it is also the same, whether it be you find the communities at work or you find it beyond work and you know, you go into events, you're networking, all of that in your local city. I think one, one, sp one space to find community that people often fail to leverage is online. Yep. Online mm -hmm. communities, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll be connecting with so many great people on Instagram. I've yeah. connected with you on Instagram, yeah. I've, you know, on LinkedIn. You know, people don't really leverage the fact that online is a, is a huge platform for you to find communities. One of the biggest motivations for me for creating the Mentors and Mentees community is because it's an online space that can extend, right? There's an infinite amount of people that can eventually join Mentors and Mentees, which is a community that I lead, and that can always be growing. It can always be accruing. But most importantly, people discover our space and they see a purpose in it, right? Mm -hmm. they, they see that there's an opportunity for them to share their biggest mistakes, their biggest learnings, and help other people who are looking to achieve success in their lives. Right? right. And, you know, online spaces, I think, are a powerful destination to find community, especially if you're putting in, you know, if you're trying to be a, a community member, if you're trying to, you know, actually put in value and help others and pay it forward for other people. So I think that's one that at any point in your life, you don't want to disregard. Right. Finding online communities, you know, that that really foster belonging in you and allow you to connect. Right. Yep. You, you said it plain and simple right there, especially like within your city. Find those places. Go out like. Yeah. People be asking me, where are you going? I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to this, this meet and greet. I'm going to I'm this going network. To and people are like, I didn't even know this stuff existed. I'm like, you got to look for it. You just you honestly have to look for it. It's not just going to fall on your lap. Too, right? Yeah. All right. I mean, yeah. you know, if you're interested in something specific, such as psychology or business or the overlap between the two, mm -hmm. then go join a business psychology group on yeah. meetup.com. Yep. Or find a Facebook group that says, you know, we are a business psychology group in the local Seattle, San Francisco, whatever yeah. area, and we are looking for members. And then you'll start finding people who you want to be a part of their tribe, right? And they exactly. can speak to you. I think that's I, people disregard that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, 
towards the end for the audience, I mean, I'm gonna I'll I'll recap this episode and I'll put some specific links in the show notes for websites y'all could go to to find these groups and network within your local area or online. Um, but also, uh, you you mentioned two other things in here, and it kind of is good because it kind of touches on things that we're gonna try to talk about anyway. First thing uh, that you touched on was that you said you had an internship. And I put yeah. on my Instagram story. I said, Yo, I'm talking to this career uh, expert guy. What are some questions you guys have about your careers? Right. So one of the questions was how to find internships and fellowships. What's the best way to go about it? So could you touch on that a little bit? Oh, that's that's a deep one. That's oh, a deep yeah. one. How to find internships <laughs> and fellowships, man. Look, y'all, for y'all listening to this podcast right now, I want to let y'all know it's a grind. Internships, job searching, finding opportunities, it's a grind, right? And it's a matter of you have to be visible. You have to make yourself mm. first visible. There's a lot of people that say, I'm looking for an internship, I'm looking for a job, but they're not even trying to like make themselves visible. And what I mean by making yourself professionally visible is by you proactively creating those opportunities and showing that you have the expertise to thrive in that next role that you want whether it be internship or a full-time job. Right. For example, for example, if you are in college right now and you're looking to be a part of a fellowship, a part of an internship, how are you proactively standing out, right? right? Like how are you proactively you know, creating content online to show, look, this is what I'm a fit for this fellowship. This is what I'm a fit for this internship, right? The first step that, the first foundational step that everyone is aware of is you gotta submit your resume. You gotta apply. All right, we all know that. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's a tried and truth met- method that's been happening for the last, you know, 50, 60 years or so, right? The traditional method of you got to apply for something and then it'll come to you if you wait. Right. But that's not the way we do things anymore in this generation. That's not the way your mindset should be. It should be that you are always proactively putting yourself out there for those opportunities to come to you. And more importantly, for you to be able to say, this is why I buy and I'm a fit for those opportunities because that's how people discover you. Mm-hmm. So for the young student right now, who's talking about, I'm trying to get an internship with Google my sophomore year, you need to think to yourself, no, 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 no. It's not how do I get an internship with Google. It's how does Google find me? Right. <laughs> like how does Google find me and see that I'm I'm the man for the job? I have the engineering skills, I have the business skills, I have the mindset to come in that role and thrive. That's a completely different shift. And I think there's a there's a few ways to go about doing it. Start leveraging platforms such as your social media, right? Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever is your medium of choice to showcase your expertise and your hunger, right? For example, you Cleveland, like you have an amazing personal brand, right? You're doing things such as this podcast, you're standing out as a young professional, as a as a, someone early in their career, you're leveraging LinkedIn to find people to get in contact with. That's that's ways to stand out, to really be proactive, right? And there's so many members of my community and students that I talk to, you know, who who do these small things to, you know, really differentiate themselves from the fray, right? So really be visible using your online platforms. Also start looking for an inside in as i call it at these companies so an insider right so uh, someone that yeah. maybe went to your alma mater and is at this company that you really really want to work with and can speak to your experience as you know as someone that went through the same thing they probably went through when they were an undergrad right, right. or maybe was interested in the same role or the same degree the same the same field of study as they as they are get into informational conversations with them saying hey look I'm currently pursuing my degree. I would love to work with where you're at. Tell me a little bit about your experience. I see, I see that you grad, I graduated from North Carolina A&T. Mm-hmm. I see that you graduated from, you know, Stanford University, right? Like, talk to me a little bit. About how are you doing, man? You, you're still, you know, maybe two years in your career. Really be personable. Build those, right. build those relationships. And if you don't find someone in your immediate proximity that you can do that with, then use LinkedIn to find and source them online, right? And then send them a DM, right? Literally build that network and be intentional about it. And those are two, two core ways where, boom, you can eventually get into that role that you dream of if you proactively do that. Because it's not a matter of doing it one and done. It's a matter of being consistent because sometimes people may not follow up with you, right? Right. That's good. Yeah, man. You got, it's, it's all about eyeballs, man. Attention is like, <laughs> attention is currency, basically, man. Attention is currency. You know, but you know, I, I often, it's so funny you said attention is currency because I think the most powerful form of currency is information. Ah. So, you know, you doing things such as this, you're, you're giving people information. Yeah. But another powerful one is currency. Yeah. It's, it's attention, I'm sorry. It's attention. That is another powerful form of currency. And you creating that attention by making yourself visible because people, you know, some people are more introverted too, you know? Yeah. I mean, people, I, I, I'm active like on, on LinkedIn and social media and all that stuff. And I reach out to people for networking purposes. Yeah. I'm an introverted person. Like, I, I, I can see <laughs> what I'm so, so people like you, you know, y'all are amazing because a lot of people are like, you know, introverts can't do this. They can't do that. You know, they, they, they don't want, want to put themselves out there like that. But you, you're finding your own way that makes you feel comfortable, right? You're yeah. creating that, those opportunities. And I think that's the, that, that's what, that's why I often don't really, you know, fall into this dogma of if you're an introvert, you can't stand out. Or, you know, if extroverted people are the only the ones that always say, no, I don't believe uh, it. I just yeah. feel this is that you got to find your niche. Yeah. What makes you, you know, thrive in situations where you can build rapport? You know, is it going to things that you're really, really interested in? Or is it having these one-to-one conversations? Or is it having your own podcast where you can talk to people who are experts and are awesome at, the, at what they do and you can learn from them, right? right. You know, yeah, what, yeah. what is your niche? That's really it. Right. So, yeah, like for me, like for this podcast, I'm kind of finding my niche. Like, I like asking questions. I like, you know, <laughs> getting experts on here and that's my like i say all the time podcasting is probably the best form of networking i've found so far like when else would i be able to sit down with you for however long for free yeah, for free <laughs> for free for that's free. the key part for free you should be charging me for this right now honestly <laughs> and be straight up so like 
I tell people, man, just find a way to get in there. And honestly, it's all about how bad you want it. If you really, really want it, you're going to put yourself, like you said, in an uncomfortable position. Me going to networking events, there's a number of times I've been to networking events and stood there and just watched. (laughs) And and I'm like, I leave. I'm just like, dang, I did it again. I didn't talk to, you know, I might have talked to like maybe two people, but there were so many other opportunities I could have done. But I was just so like shy and like I didn't want to step out of my bubble. But I just kept going over and over and over again. And eventually I started getting good at kind of making those intro remarks, kind of, making those conversations happen organically. So it just takes time. It takes practice, how bad you want it and putting yourself in the right situation to make it happen. Bro, preach, preach, man. So, so, um, for, for the transitional person, you kind of touched on this as well. Um, and you, you gave some tips for, for that person who's trying to make that change in your life, but you, you're currently making a, a change in your yeah. life right now as well. So yeah. we can kind of get to that a little bit, cause I'm really actually curious to why, uh, you're making this, this shift that you could, you, you could drop the, the bomb yourself. Yeah, so I'm going to be working with WeWork. I'm transitioning into a new role in my life, working with WeWork, which is essentially the the, the company that's going to unleash the future of work. I'm going to be doing product marketing management for them. And you know, one of the biggest reasons I'm making this transition right now, I'm still early in my career. A lot of people don't. A lot. I think a lot of people, you know, they think I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually still very early in my career. But the thing is, like, I'm constantly adapting. I'm right. adapting my learnings. Right. I'm iterating upon where I want to go and where I feel as if it's the best fit for me. I'm living in the future of work in present day. And one of the big reasons I'm making the transition to work with a platform and a company such as we work is that they have tremendous potential in literally changing the mindset of our culture, our society, so people can transform as human beings and, and pursue purpose over paychecks, is my opinion, right? And my former role at Microsoft was my dream role. It really was. I was a product manager. I was working within a great team of people. I found tremendous mentors and allies. But you know, you have to understand that when your destiny is calling, mm-hmm. you got to pursue that, right? So dreams over destiny is, is, is how I want to say it, right? Sometimes there's there's better things for you, ahead of you because it's more of your calling. It's more aligned with your value systems than you know what you necessarily thought was your dreams, right? Mm-hmm. What was that kind of expected norms for you to eventually get into? It was expected for me to work with Microsoft. It was expected by my parents. And, you know, I, I did everything right, right? I, I went to school at Texas Tech University and got my psychology degree. And then I, I went to school at University of Texas Austin and got my master's degree. So it was expected for me to, you know, eventually work at a great company, right? And, you know, and, and, and spend time there, right? And, you know, do good work, right? My parents were proud of me when I told them I got a job at Microsoft. Yeah. But that wasn't my destiny, to be honest with you. And one of the reasons that I actually chose this opportunity to work with WeWork is the fact that it's more in line to where I want to build mastery as a community builder and someone that's really insanely passionate about community building. But also there's this interesting story about my past in which around the 2007, 2008 recession, man, my parents lost their jobs, both of them at the same time, right? And it literally positioned my parents and our family in a in a in a in a weird situation in which we weren't going to be able to support ourselves if it wasn't for the power of our culture and our community at the time in Houston, Texas. And we really relied on our on our church family, the people that lived in Austin that were a part of our African culture to really help us thrive. And if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have adapted. Right. As a, as a family unit. Right. And it was so funny that we experienced that during the recession because I saw my parents, man, they had to adapt in this country. When we moved here in 1999, they had to adapt to, you know, finding ways to thrive again, learning the new education system, learning how to get, get employed by the companies in Houston. Right. And pursue, you know, their passion for medicine and healthcare tech. Right. They had to learn all of these things again. And all of a sudden they were, were in a position where they had they didn't have anything because they got fired and it was due to the recession. And that 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 going through that, seeing that while I was younger, helped me realize that, you know, adaptation and, and always future proofing yourself is really what allows us to thrive as a people, right? Yeah. And understanding where can we find places of belonging? How do we leverage our communities that matter to us? How do we leverage the people that care for us to really continue to foster in our self-development? And also as a society, that's something that's core to me, man. So when I think of WeWork and I think of their platform, and I think about where I can add unique value as a professional and as someone that is a, is, 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 as a lover of community and building uh, and building communities and, and and fostering better workplace cultures and communities, it was a good fit for me, man. And that's why I always encourage people when you're when it's time for you to find a job, don't just find a job because you need the money. Find a job because you really actually align to the value systems of that corporation, that company, that team, that leader that you want to work with, right? Yeah. Don't just settle just for mediocre. If you just settle for salary and making sure that you can, you know, get a paycheck, that's mediocre. Mm-hmm. You got You don't settle for mediocre. You want to settle for purpose. That's a different level. Yeah. And well, you just segue perfectly into what I wanted to get into next. Um, and this this is actually quite relevant in my life because just yesterday I got off the phone uh, with some people in Florida uh, and turned down an offer. <laughs> um, and it just it, it was in healthcare, and it didn't really just it didn't align with what I was trying to do with with my life. And I just had to make that hard decision. I could have gone that route. And 
it probably would have been a lot more simple, a lot more less things I had to worry about and think about and stress about uh, going into the future. But it, I knew it would have just felt like it was holding me back. So for the person, and this is kind of me right now asking this, and I know there's a whole bunch of more people out there who are like me, that uh, they have this entrepreneurial vision. But in, oh, oh my goodness, what's in my stomach? Uh, <laughs> it's time to eat lunch. Um, but they, they have this entrepreneurial vision. But in order for them to kind of get to that place, they have to find this place to fund what they really want to do. They're in venture. So do you, the hard part is, OK, well, clear. Obviously, thing is, OK, get a job like that will help you make money so you could, you know, fund whatever you want to do. Mm. But there are certain things that I've experienced. I know with some internships I've had. And no disrespect to these organizations. Um, I, I loved when I was there. Like the people were great. I still have connections with them now. But I felt like whenever I was at work, I was it was time taking away from what I wanted to build, not necessarily even as far as my business or what my ventures were, as far as my skill set in general. Mm. So do you advise you said not to settle for mediocre, but for the person that needs to either make ends meet while they're trying to pursue their passion or for the person who needs to fund their passion in a way, finding a thing that kind of aligns with what they're trying to do yeah. seems like the hard part. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think do it, though. I don't want you know, this is this is one thing about me. I don't do excuses, man. I'm tired of this world where we all are giving excuses as to you can't find your passion. You know, like right, yeah. it will come to you. No, nah, man, you got to be you have to be intentional. You have to be people aren't intentional anymore. That's that's the thing that scares me about our society anymore. People aren't intentional about what they do anymore. You can even if you aren't in your prime job, if you're not in the best job ever, right? You can still be intentional about redesigning that job to align more to what you want to, how you want to develop, right? Mm. And you, and if that, and if that job doesn't allow for that, if you're in a, in a space that doesn't allow for that, you have to leave. You cannot waste your time. You can't waste your time. You only have a finite time mm -hmm. in this in this life. You can't. You, we we can't live forever. We just can't. <laughs> and it's sad, but we just can't. Yeah. Our spirits may. But yeah. physically, our bodies cannot live forever. Therefore, we have to be very intentional about what we give our times to, what we give our energy to, and who we collaborate with. The things that we learn to further develop ourselves. One thing about me is that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm really, really intentional about everything that I do, and it shows in terms of how I manifest my purpose, whether it be as a public speaker, as a community builder, and as a career coach. I care about people that I work with, and, and you know, I want to ensure that they thrive in all that they do. And I think for people who who are not in the best position right now in their careers or in their jobs or in their lives, you have to take a step back and ask yourself, are you actually being intentional? And have you not, have you ever really stopped and asked yourself why? Mm -hmm. Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? And more importantly, what is it that I want to do in this life, right? Am I, and how do I really redirect my energy to do that from a f family level, from a societal level, from my career from the perspective of my career, right? And, you know, looking at my finances, am I putting the money where I, where am I putting my money where I need to be putting it, yeah, right? Yeah. All of these things are just some stuff that we we don't often think of early in our careers. At the midpoint of our careers, we don't think about it enough. And with me, I'm I'm early in my career, but I, I think about it every single day. Where am I investing my money? Who am I partnering with when it comes to projects, right? How am I giving my energy to the people I care about, right? How am I investing my time? Right. I, it's all it's all intentional. It's all intentional. And I think if we start living, if, if people start incur it, like living their lives from a more intentional perspective versus, you know, haphazardly and taking those times to introspect as to what are the things I truly care about? You start seeing a shift in people pursuing their purpose, even if they aren't in the positions that are perfect for them. Right. Because, for instance, I wasn't in the perfect job when I was in undergrad. I was working at an IT support center. <laughs> right. You know, helping yeah. people, you know, troubleshoot technical issues uh, at Texas Tech University. That wasn't necessarily the perfect job, but I was always searching. But what's next? I was always learning. I was progressing, right? So you never settle for less than perfect. You gotta progress. And I think that's my biggest, my biggest call to action for those people. How are you progressing? If you feel as if you're just settling and you've been in the same static position for the last three to five years, mm -hmm. you have to redesign your future. Right. Wow. Yeah. And that's pretty much basically what I've been doing. Uh you know, <laughs> like <laughs> they'd be like, hey man, what you searching on your laptop? I'm like, this is my personal laptop and I'm looking up other places to go. But <laughs> um but <laughs> don't do that, people. You might need to do it, but do it on your lunch break. Um, <laughs> but as far as there's a few other things that I want to do that um, I always like to give the audience some practical, real practical tips that they can literally yeah. apply. I mean, even though you're already given some that just straight out the gate, no type of philosophy stuff like this is stuff you could just put pen to paper. And um, yeah, one right. of those things <laughs> we is... We don't do philosophy here. <laughs> yeah, man. Everybody wants to be so theoretical. But uh, <laughs> for, 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 for resume building is one. And, and the second one is um, job search tips. So... Uh, first for resume, um, I mean, I've been trying to get my resume together. I think I have a pretty decent resume, but, um, I feel like there are always, always little things that people don't, aren't necessarily aware of that could just take their resume over to the next level to make someone actually stop and look at it because they, they get so many resumes. Um, so are there any ones that you would suggest for that? 
Yeah. So for those who are young professionals listening to this, you know, if you're early in your career and you're trying to get your foot in the door at a company, make sure you put your education section at the top so people know where you went to school, what you got your degree in when you're graduating, because you don't want to waste the reviewer's time as they're looking through your resume and they're trying to find a fit for one of the internships that you're applying for or one of the full time opportunities that you're applying for. You know, your education matters. If you went to a really reputable school such as a Stanford, or if you're going to a school that has a great engineering program or a great business program, right? Mm-hmm. You want to, you want to have that, you want to have that to be the top because right. people, literally, literally people want to, you know, it matters. That's why you know, having a degree is still encouraged in this generation because when you go to school and having a degree can dictate if you get a, a good paying job or not still, right? And whether or not you agree with that, that's just the situation we're in right now as a society. And that's fine, right? Because if you did the work and you put in the time, and you got a great degree and you developed your critical thinking skills, you know, you want to be able to show for that and tout that in your resume. So make that the, that should be the first thing that a uh, uh, recruiter sees when they're looking at your resume. Don't make it the last thing at all, unless you have been in industry for the last 20 years or so, right? So make sure you do that. Because I see a lot of young professionals, they have their education as the last thing. And I'm thinking, look, if you don't have that much professional experience, you can't really do that. Yeah. Another thing is on your resume, please, 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 if you are a young professional, and if you are someone that is looking for a leadership role and you've been in your industry for three to five years, outline how you're a leader, mm-hmm. right? How are you a leader? How are you going to tout for a senior level director role? Or how are you going to tout that you're going to be a rock star, you know, entry level product manager if you don't showcase your leadership skills, right? And how, while you were in college, you participated in you know, student organizations or you led initiatives that really brought your community together at a university level or that you, you know, work with nonprofits and you took a leadership role in, you know, helping them, you know, orchestrate whatever projects that they were working on or helping them, you know, create volunteer opportunities between the university and that specific nonprofit. How did you do all of those things, right? Outline that in your resume. Resume, so it's clear that you are a leader and you are a young professional or you are someone that is 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 well positioned to thrive as a leadership as a leader in a leadership role or as a young professional in an entry-level role where you're gonna be working with people from multiple generations, right? Make sure you outline that because leadership matters. One of the top skills in the future of work and in 2020 is you have to be able to lead, you have to be able to manage other people, you have to be able to communicate. Right. These are very tangible skills that you can grow as a leader, but also by being in leadership positions at the undergrad level or at the grad level. So highly encourage on your resume, outline how you're a leader. And lastly, make sure your resume roars. You, I was, I'm still surprised how people don't understand that basic fact <laughs> in terms of having resumes in which your experience and description of your experiences are results oriented. How did you accomplish something? So if you let let a marketing campaign and it brought about 40% of return on investment for the business, outline that, right? right? You know what I'm saying? Don't just outline what you did, outline what the you results. got done. Ah, that's good. Okay. Yeah. And for, for okay, job searching, because you have to have somewhere to submit this resume mm-hmm. to turn in, uh, what would you think is the, the best way to, to go about that? You know, applying is not the way you're going to get the job. I am going to be very blunt about that for people who are listening. Your resume isn't what gets you the job. It really is. It's a means to an end. It's one of the first steps. But what gets you the job is how you are making yourself visible online, the the the, the robust profile you, you've established for yourself as a student, as someone that's been in the industry for five years, and how you're leveraging your network, right? How are you developing relationships offline that align to your next opportunity, right? Your next big break. Mm-hmm. So... Applying online is one step because you kind of want to be in the system. But I have even had opportunities that come my way in which I was connected to someone at a company and I just sent them my resume so they can, you know, high level, get a glance of what I've done. And I didn't go through any system. Oh. Right? I, never, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't submit no application tracking system. Right. No, because the best way now, the best way people are getting hired, the most often ways people are getting into these big tech companies or any company is through a referral based system. Right. And there's some pros and cons to that. Right. Such as, you know, a lot of these a lot of people in these companies they only refer people that look like them which is bad but there's also a benefit to that system in which if you know someone at a company right for example if y'all listening to this podcast right now y'all know me i work at we work if one of y'all reaches out to me and say hey tim i need to refer to work at we work and if i look at your profile on linkedin if you send me your resume and i like what i see i think there's a position for you that's a fit i'll refer you because i see that there's potential for you to add value to what we're trying to do at we work to what we're trying to accomplish and more importantly that you're trying to grow within our company so you can grow beyond our company right mm-hmm. but i have to you have to show me you have to be able to you know you know, pitch yourself to me in order to do so. But networking is the only way to do that. Really being intentional about who you're connecting with offline and online is the way to do that. Yeah. So would you say like a good way if you want to do both is like, okay, you want this position, you see the offer online, you apply, you put your go whatever application process they have. Looking on the website, finding whoever is the leader who's in your space, finding them on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, and also reaching out over there to, to make sure that you have that connection. Because sometimes I feel like, <clears throat> at least for me, uh, if I turn in my resume, I mean, it's not on there now. Uh, I don't have my, my Instagram. I don't have my LinkedIn profile stuff on my resume. So they don't know I have this this 
body of work that's not on this piece of paper as well. Yeah. So like, uh, I, I guess a good way, I mean, is that a possible way you could go about that is finding those leaders and then finding them on like online and yeah, pitching yeah, yourself yeah. that way? Yeah, and, and you know, and making a short pitch too, right? So you apply, you submit your resume, but then network laterally to saying, hey, can I find some of the decision makers or the figures at these companies and start building rapport with them, start put, building a relationship with them, right? And mm-hmm. introducing myself, being very concise as to, you know, this is what I do, you know, I love what you guys are doing at the company that you work with, and I love, you know, your brand and what you're doing as a as a, as a leader within the company, you know, I want to I want to connect with you so I can, you know, keep track of the content that you share or the work that you do, right? Boom, you just made a connection, but more importantly, you can keep that going over time by liking their posts, mm-hmm. by, you know, if there's an if they if there's their two-year anniversary at whatever company they work at, you congratulate them. You stay consistent, you're building that rapport, you're building that relationship. So, you apply, but then you go ahead and you start building those connections, right? Whether it be you find them on Instagram or more, more likely you find them on LinkedIn and you see, you know, how are they branding themselves? Or more importantly, how can you, how can you add value to them? Whether it be bringing them on your podcast, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Or telling them, Hey, look, my school is looking for a public speaker. I would love for you to come and speak maybe virtually or physically for an hour or so. Right. right. Or say, Hey, look, I see what your company is doing. Have you seen this article that, you know, potentially will give you some ideas on how y'all can retrofit your business model? Right. right? Okay. Man, these are like really tactical things. Yeah, that, yeah. They, they, they allow you to exchange value. They allow you to, you know, build rapport, introduce yourself and stand out. Right. Literally. And students need to understand how to do this. But more importantly, anyone who's looking to potentially work at their dream role, at their dream company needs to understand how do you network online from a point of value exchange? It's an important concept. And is there a certain point where you, you flip out the resume or is it like you just connect and build that relationship and just leave it, leave it there? Yeah, don't even give them your resume. Just build that relationship. Okay. Yeah, That's yeah. A, a lot of students are just, you know, they often just reach out to people and say, hey, look, this is my resume. Check right. me out. Always asking. Always asking. Always yeah. asking, man. That, look, that makes you look bad. Yeah. You look bad. It really, really does because you're not looking intentionally, you're not intentionally looking to build a relationship. Right. You know, rapport matters, man, in this day and age. Relationship capital is a priority. Even more Super so than, priority. Yeah, <laughs> even more so than, you know, pure capital right Money. yeah yeah um that was that was pretty much it man you you slayed it you killed it bro thanks man thanks brother so if y'all want to connect with me please connect with me on linkedin follow me on instagram i love linkedin and instagram they are my two primary platforms that i'm super active on in terms of content creation storytelling and you know connecting with my community but i also encourage you to join the mentors and mentees community on facebook which is the community that i lead and i cultivate and i build and that has my heart day in and day out and if you are looking to thrive in your career and you want to be around a supportive cast of people all over the world who work at Microsoft, who work at Facebook, who work at WeWork, who work at some amazing companies and are you know in a variety of industries, join the Mentors and Mentees community because that's where you can find that support system that you need and learn from our members and potentially you know connect with some great experiences as well um, as we continue to grow. So thank y'all. I'm so happy that I did this with Cleveland. He's amazing. And, you know, y'all better, you know, make sure y'all share this on your Instagram or your yes. LinkedIn, you know, tag me uh, and Cleveland and, you know, let us know what you think. And, you know, if you are needing my support as a, as a, I'm a career coach as well, please reach out and, you know, we can talk business. And how do they access the mentor mentees part of it? So you can join the mentors and mentees Facebook group on Facebook, on Facebook, so literally search mentors and mentees, mentors and percent mentees on Facebook. And you can request to join, make sure you fill out the answers before you join yeah. um, <laughs> fill out the questions to the end, to the fill out answers to the questions I have so I can make sure you're human before you join. And yeah, welcome to the community if you join. Yeah. All right. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Tim Salau. I know I learned a whole bunch from this one. Um, And a few things I took away was the first thing you have to immerse yourself in these communities, man. This is where it's at. This is where you can connect with people who are like minded, find out about things you didn't even know about. And, and, and you just had to be intentional about doing it. And you could do it locally or you could do it online. And now you have access to thousands and thousands of people at the tip of your fingers. So immerse yourself in those communities. I'll put some links to those um, that you could do in the show notes that you may not know about already. Um, but of course, you could always go to Facebook, um, Twitter and Instagram for groups like that. But I'll put some ones that may not be as known in the show notes as well. Secondly, you have to make yourself visible in order to get opportunities it's not enough to just fill out an application turn in your resume turn in your cover letter these days the market is saturated no matter what attention is where it is at you have to grab the attention of those you are seeking you have to make it visible Uh, make yourself visible by showing what you could do putting yourself out there reaching out on linkedin to those uh, people who have control over whether you get the job or not make those connections show that you are doing things that align with what their vision and mission is make yourself visible so that 
you get those opportunities coming to you instead of you always trying to reach out to those opportunities you know what i'm saying uh like tim said you just have to be intentional about making yourself seen we are in the day of attention so last thing you gotta just be intentional about investing yourself in the right places be intentional about where you invest yourself are you investing your funds in the right place for you to reach your career goal or your career vision are you investing your time properly you have to be intentional about where you're placing yourself in order to achieve your career goals your visions as an individual as an entrepreneur as a creative as a freelancer whatever it is you have to be intentional about where you invest yourself guys i really hope you enjoyed this one if you really did do me a solid take a screenshot of you listening to this podcast share it on your instagram story tag at the music report podcast i'll be reposting those and if you're feeling really good share something that you learned from this episode tell a friend tell an aunt tell an uncle tell a colleague tell a co-worker about this if it's someone that you know that needs to hear this share it with them don't be selfish with this gold (laughs) all right guys that's enough for me i will be back on friday with another five minute friday but until then keep turning your dreams and muse into reality peace Thank you for listening, everything but it's time to go We'll have a new one for you next week on the flip side But until then, don't kill the vibe Subscribe, don't kill the vibe Make sure you go ahead and subscribe Don't kill the vibe, make sure you go ahead and subscribe Don't kill the vibe, make sure you go ahead and subscribe Don't kill the vibe, make sure you go ahead and subscribe Hey guys, Klee here. Thanks so much for listening to the Build Your Vision podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I would think you did if you stayed all the way to the end. The best thing that you could do to help support this show is by sharing it with somebody. By you just taking a few seconds to recommend this show to somebody, you are making a huge impact, not only on the success of this show, but possibly on that person's life.